alone in the dark. When we arrive at Derseto, the most obvious thing is the oil lamp right in front of us, the first item that we can pick up. Both of the letters that the characters offer when you select them at the beginning of the game mention a drawer hidden in an old piano, which you can find if you examine in the corner. It just contains a suicide letter from Jeremy Hartwood without a lot of information. 60 seconds after the game starts, a monster will burst through the window here, so you have to prepare for it. And shortly after that, another will burst out of the trapdoor here. In order to deal with this, you can push this wardrobe over to block the window, and you can push this chest over to block the trapdoor, or you can just stand on it for a second, which is kind of funny. That can prevent the monsters from getting into the room entirely, and then you can get the old blanket from the wardrobe, and you can get the rifle from the treasure chest. Among the books, there's a clue about using mirrors. Then we head downstairs. On the next floor, we come down here, and we can immediately collect a hunting bow in the supply room. There's also an oil can in here, which we can use to fill up the oil lamp that we found in the attic. And we need to be careful proceeding down the hallway, because there's a discolored part of the floor, and if you step on it, you'll fall through and get an instant death. In this first room to the left, you can examine the desk to find a key, and then use that key to open the chest, and that'll give you a cavalry saber, which we'll need for a puzzle later, so we don't recommend using it for combat. A zombie will probably attack us the door as we exit, so you can just kung fu chop it or kick it to death. Then we can head across into the other room, and this time right after we head in, we want to close the door behind us so this yellow shirt zombie can't follow us into the room. There's not much to do in here, but we can make it around the hole in the hallway, there's another monster that's going to burst through the window in this room. What we need to do aside from that monster is pick up the vase, throw it against the wall to break it, collect the key that was inside of it, use that to open the dresser over here, and get a couple mirrors. You want to take out this monster before you get the mirrors because the mirrors will break if you get hit in combat, and then your game is over. So then we head the rest of the way down the hallway, and we can see these two purple monsters. This is where we remember our clue about the Golden Fleece, and we can place those two mirrors that we found on the statues in the corner. Those will reflect the monsters, and it'll kill them both. Then use either staircase to get downstairs. As we come down the stairs here, some evil forces will slam the library door shut, so we can't go in there right away. So if we explore around, let's just start over here. There's a room with a ghost just chilling in a chair. We gotta watch out for him, because if you touch him, he'll turn into a tornado of energy and instantly kill you. You can find a gramophone, some ammo, and if you carefully maneuver around him, you can get a matchbox over here. The poker that's in there is useless. Watch out too as you're coming through this lobby because there's a suit of armor in the corner that will attack you if you touch it. On the other side of the entrance hall, we can head into this long hallway with several doors. This first room just has a book we can find with some lore in it, as well as another little zombie chicken that'll jump through the window. The book is a kind of disturbing diary talking about some of the monsters we see elsewhere in the mansion. It also talks about a crack in the basement wall. In the bathroom, there's an invincible kind of jellyfish monster hiding in the tub. There's two items that we can find just inside the door on the right, but it'll zap us if we stay in the room too far, so you want to kind of hop in and out to get both of those one by one. Finally, this room is really dark. We have to turn on our oil lamp to see what's going on in here. And there's a heavy statuette and some ammo that we can find. There's also a book that, among other things, talks about using torches to light the way in darkness. If you go too much further, there's a haunted painting in this next hallway that'll kill you with projectiles if you try to get past it, so for now this is a no-go point. We're going to go ahead and head downstairs to see what we can see down there. Okay, let's head into the kitchen first. In here there is a pot of soup on the stove that's full of human flesh. We can just take that with us just in case. And in the storage room there is a key to the cellar and a little box of biscuits. In the other part of the kitchen is some coal storage. You can go in there to dig up a shoebox with a gun in it. You can fill up the jug we found full of water. And there's also a zombie that's going to attack us from the kitchen as soon as we enter, so there might be a little close quarters combat at this point. If you leave the other door out of the kitchen, you can come straight on through and find this little dining room full of zombies. You have two options. You can fight them one by one. They're polite enough not to challenge you all at once. Or you can put down that pot of human soup that we found, and they'll all go eat that, and then we can pass by unharmed. The next room, this has like a magic cigar on this table that'll fill the room up with smoke that hurts us if we're not careful, so you want to pour the jug of water that we got on that cigar to douse it. Then we can collect a book in here that talks again about mysterious phenomena in space. There's also a lighter that we can get off the cigar which will let us light things even if we fall in water, which will be important at the end of the game. So we can't go through here yet, this door is locked, so at this point I think we can head back on upstairs. On our way back upstairs, we can head through this room and get three arrows for our bow and the statue. Some spiders will descend down as soon as we do that, so we want to turn around and flee back out of the room as quick as we can before we head back upstairs. 
Okay, so now we can do a couple more things up here. There's not really any clues that I can tell on how to deal with this, but if we get the old blanket that we found in the attic, we can put it over this painting to block its projectiles. And then come down the hallway a little bit and use the arrows that we found to destroy the other painting at the far end. Aiming the arrows is really annoying, but for whatever reason, if your character throws the arrows instead of firing them with the bow, you can get down here and collect them again in case you miss. At the far end down here is Jeremy's bedroom, and there's a couple important items in here to find. Mainly behind the clock, if you push this clock out of the way, there's a hole in the wall, and we can find key to his study and a paper about the creatures of the night. It talks about a prowler among the books and using a steel blade to kill it. So, if we head into the library, it's dark and we have to use a light, but there is indeed a prowler among the books, kind of like a purple particle monster that can phase through the shelves. We need to frantically search around the library until we find a spot where we can put the book that we found in Jeremy's bedroom to open up a secret passage into his little ritual room here. There's a talisman, some books, and some daggers that we can find. The books tell us about the dagger is a sinusoidal blade, a curved blade, that's the one we want to use against the monster. And there's some other stuff about rituals and the powers of symbols carved into stones. There's also one book you don't want to read about mysterious worms written in Latin, De Vermis Mysterious, that'll kill you if you read it. But if we get that dagger, we can come back out here and kill the Vagabond with it. And then we can explore and find four more books to get some more clues in the library. As we return to the lobby here, we can use that heavy statuette we found in the room to throw it against the suit of armor and destroy it, letting us collect his sword. That's going to be important later. And we can head back downstairs. The key that we found in the kitchen leads to the cellar. We can go ahead and go downstairs now. You don't really have to come down here, but there's an interesting book with some clues that we can find, pretty harmless rats, and you can move these barrels out of the way to go through a secret passage and get a little preview of the end game area. Back upstairs, we'll finish up the house stuff. So we found a key to the study that'll open up this door here. We can use that old cavalry saber that we found on this emblem to open up a secret passage downstairs that we'll use a little bit later. We can also collect an important record called the Dance of Death for our gramophone. Then we just go straight across the hall and we can fight this mini boss, really like the only boss you fight directly in the game. It's a pirate and we want to use the sword that we got against the suit of armor to take him out. He'll drop a key that we can get into the final room of the house, which is this dance room. You want to put the gramophone down with the Dance of Death record playing. That'll make these three ghost couples start dancing around the room in random patterns. They will still kill you if you touch them, but you want to get the key that we'll need towards the end of the game off the mantelpiece and watch out for them as we do so. Once we've done all those things, we have all that we need to go ahead and proceed into the end game area. So in the underground maze, it's a little more straightforward and you'll notice that you have a new action in your menu, which is jump, which is so exciting. So first of all, start by going across this bridge, which will collapse as you run across it, meaning we will not be able to return this way in a little bit. Follow the tunnel around, and then as you round this corner, a massive creepy worm will start attacking you, so you just have to run. This passageway is blocked off, so you'll be shepherded to the right here, and you need to take out another one of these little zombie chickens. Once you get to this point, the worm will be in front of you, but if you go back around the hallway and then kind of go back and forth, eventually it'll retreat and you can head back onto the next room. We see another new kind of monster, which are invincible, these deep ones in the water. They'll approach you and they can swing their arms to try to hit you, so you want to just hustle around the dock. we got to use our new jump command for the first time to make it over a collapsing part of the dock that looks a little bit different, you can watch out for. And hopefully you can climb up here and make your way to the next enemy, which is this spider monster in the hallway. Continue across, and then we have a lovely jumping puzzle. You can try to use your rifle to take out the flying monster before, so it's not quite as frustrating. But you want to jump across these pillars to make it to this far tunnel here and follow that around. Make sure you go to the right at this tunnel. To the left is a spider of Lang that will pursue you out of his little hole if you get too close, and it's kind of annoying. But soon we end up here. So this is the point where reading all the books in the castle will help. There's a clue in one of Pregst's books talking about his little pirate code. It says, if you see a skull, go to port, and if you see a saber, go to starboard. Port is left, starboard's right. We see a saber, we'll go right. Continue along, follow this to the right. Skull means left. Here, skull means left again, so keep left. Saber means right. Skull means left, keep this way. And that'll take us safely across these collapsing platforms to get to the far side. Really hope you remember to grab that key from the dance room because that'll open this chest and get us the gem we need to go ahead and finish the game. We can push this rock out of the way and just follow this hallway around here to the big maze at the end of the game. You have to use your light in this maze, so hopefully you have some oil left. Otherwise, there's not any enemies in here, and it's pretty straightforward. You just kind of follow these hallways around 
and hope that you don't run out of light and have to navigate this maze in the dark and or start the game over. And then you're in the final room of the game. This is where Pregst himself is like built into a tree and doing some evil cult stuff down here so you want to just head straight across the room while he starts shooting fireballs at you. On the shrine here there's a hook that you can pick up and then if you've read the books you might know that you want to put the talisman on this shrine to sort of drain his powers. Then you can light your lamp with the lighter, chuck it at him, and just burn him to death for the last time. That'll also kill all the monsters in the underground maze so we don't have to deal with them anymore. At that point, you can use the hook we found to hustle out of here. We just have to get out of the house. So these doors that we saw earlier are openable. By the way, this is actually the one that you go through when you get a game over. You see yourself getting dragged through there by a zombie. And then head back towards the maze, and this door can also be open. So we're getting kind of shortcuts back through the way that we took. Follow these docks back around to climb up here. Now, because the worm is gone, we can go ahead and go past where it was to get to this far end and head back into the basement. In here, we'll emerge where we talked earlier next to these barrels. We can head up the stairs to the other end of the hallway and head all the way out of the house. Also, if you try to leave the house at any point before doing all this, there's a mysterious green force that'll impale you and kill you when you open the front door. And that's Alone in the Dark.